Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Hi, Marty. I'm the real Marty Levinson. Keep on cutting. Hi, wouldn't this world be a better place if every single day, every single person said, Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine. Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Come on, baby, don't you want to go? Back to that lemon light city. Sweet home, Chicago. Hi, I'm Marty Levinson. Welcome to the Northtown News Magazine show of shows with your greatest cameraman around, Sonny Hirsch, and your host, Avi Myers. Thank you, Marty. Avi Myers, Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of Sonny Hirsch and myself. Uh, dial us up on the web at www.ntnm.org. CommunityPolicingCaps24.org. Uh, we're in the middle of the holiday season, so if you got them locky, smoke them. And uh, speaking of smoke, uh, I guess we'll hit the smoke topic later with Cuba. And his, um, you know, I wonder what a locky cigar does cost. <laughs> we are uh, about to introduce you to a recent, um, not emigree, but a recent visitor of uh, Cuba, now that it's legal, and I think it's pretty cool that he went there. And chucked it out, and no more Fidel, yay! If there was no more row, that would be even a bigger yay. Um, but anyway, our election lawyer extraordinaire, Jim Neely. Jim, how you doing? Great to be here, Avi. Thanks, as always, for inviting me. First of all, always my pleasure, and thank you. And um, did you get to smoke any lackeys in Cuba? A few, <laughs> a few. Yeah, they're very good. Okay. What do they cost over there, a Cuban cigar? Um, they're probably about half what you would pay here, maybe a third of what you'd pay here. I thought it'd be even cheaper than that. No, but, uh, um, because because of it's a, it's a, you know, arranged economy, they keep the prices high so the tourists generate more revenue coming into the country, so. I got you. But now, you know, a lot of people claim Nicaraguan cigars are supposed to be better. You know, there's a lot of talk about it, but I will say the Cuban cigars are mighty good. <laughs> no, no, I hear you. They have that reputation, and you talk to people who really know about cigars, and they all say, it's still a class by itself. That's interesting. Because you know what? A lot of the guys from Cuba left and went to Nicaragua when they, when they could successfully yes. flee, so they brought their skills with them. Yeah, there, there's no doubt, you know, but again, it's just something, you know, maybe it's going to be like Coors beer eventually when everybody can get them, nobody will want it, so. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. It's like, uh, I can't believe I thought, yeah, one time, if you could get Coors, which is only available, West of the Rockies, it was considered a first-class thing to do. Uh, now you'd have to pay me to, to, to drink a can of Coors. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, as soon as it got here, the novelty wore off, and people said, this isn't that great a beer, so. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no question about it. Not to mention Adolf Coors himself he had some uh, political issues about him that uh, led to many people boycotting him. Yes, yes, you're right about that, too. Um, I do want to jump in, though, right away. You Please. mentioned it's a holiday season, and it's the traditional gift-giving season, and I want to make sure that you are primed to enter 2017 and start booking all your shows and your guests so that everybody <laughs> has a, an opportunity in 2017 to enjoy your program. So I have brought you uh, the uh, annual uh, 2017 uh, date book, and I'd like to present that to you. Wow, thank you. I, uh, well, first of all, I should say now I can see. Uh, it's actually... <laughs> I can. Law Offices of James P. Nelly, PC. Um, it's gold this year. The Golden Book. <laughs> is it, this, this is green writing, but it looks bluish because of the gold. Yeah, I. you know what? I, I, I've had different colors over the years, and, and this year when I was ordering it, the uh, woman said, uh, I usually, the last time I had gold letters on, I think, a green background. Right. And so she said... Um, why don't we try gold with green this year? I said, sounds good to me. I'm, I'm not good with colors anyhow, so. No, you can distinguish it because, no, all your books are definitely green. I'm going to have to get you into the habit of, and we just set our first shoot for 2017 today, too, so the timing well, is real good. put it in the book. So definitely Janu January 4th, and if you're not invited, um, you're not invited. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I do appreciate that a lot. 
And um, before 2016 is over, though, we do have to recap the most important story of 2016, which Please. is not the presidential race. <laughs> the Cubs winning the World Series. There's no question about it. And as a matter of fact, I asked my Facebook friends, um, I, the ones who were uh, Hillary fans, if you're a true Hillary fan and if you're a true Cub fan, would you trade Hillary winning for the Cubs losing? <laughs> I got 13 answers. And seven said, no, we'll take the Cubs. They were the wise ones. <laughs> You know, if I had voted, if, if I didn't vote for either major candidate, by the way, so and I didn't vote for one of those other two clowns either, either the communist or the dimwit, and um, <laughs> so you know what? But if my guy, you know, given the Cubs, given the president of the United States, you have to look at what's really important in life. That's right. The Cubs. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on that. Theo Epstein for president in 2020. And I know a number of people that voted for him, even though it didn't count. <laughs> I thought about voting for Chris Bryant, but I figured he wasn't 35. Yeah, he wouldn't have been able to hold on. You know what, we, we need him. I, I, I want him playing baseball. I don't want him in Washington. No, I, I will agree with that. And Well, I want him in Washington if we're playing the Senators. Yeah, the Nats. <laughs> the Nats, sorry about that. <laughs> but what an exciting World Series it was. Um, you knew the Cubs weren't. This wasn't going to be a four-game sweep. You just knew, even as talented as they were, this was going to take work. This was going to take, you know, take time and and luck and a lot of other things. But boy, <clears throat> when they were down three to one, uh, even among the hardcore Cub fans, everybody was just kind of, how are they ever going to come out of this? I world? was sure they were they were dead ducks. I was sure they were dead in the water. It was, you know, and 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 you know, history being what it was. I think we're in a new era now, but history being what it was, um, they seem to, up till then, they always found, found a way to lose. Yeah, I, I'm not a believer in curses or anything like that, and I'm certainly not a believer in that stupid goat. No, nor am I. And um, I think people who believe in that stuff are um, probably, probably, uh, nah, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. I'm wrong. <laughs> you're wrong. And, but. You know, the history has always been, no matter how good things look, something came apart at the seams and it didn't work. And yeah, it might be 1930 uh, and Hank Wilson was judging the fly ball and losing an 8 to nothing lead. I mean, all of, all of us are of a generation where we remember every detail of 1969. 1969, <laughs> and then there was... Uh, and think about that, I mean, 1969, not one, not two, not three, four Hall of Famers on that 1969 Cubs team. And... Uh, not to mention some all stars on top of the Hall of Famers. That was that was boy. guys like Beckert and Kessinger. Yeah, talk about a loaded team, but yeah. and and it didn't happen. So, you know, when we're down three to one, I'm just like, boy, I'm I'm, I'm pulling for these guys, but <laughs> I'm not so sure. No, I could. You know what? When we when we got to three to two, then it became a matter of, well, you know, one at a time. If we just win the one. And I think that's kind of the way the Cubs approached it. I, I certainly approached it that way. Yeah. Like, let's just win today, and then we'll worry about winning the next one. Yeah, but I'll tell you something. I, I hate to say it, but when, um, when Madden, and, and you know what? I, I may, I, I'm really not criticizing Madden, because Madden did, did some things that were beyond the realm of, of, of mortal man's imagination <laughs> throughout the season and made it work. Things I'd never seen before in my life. And I watched a lot of baseball. And when he brought in Chapman that early, you know, with a seven to one lead, or, or was it seven to nothing? That I think it was seven to one at yeah. that point. What is he doing? I still think that was a mistake, by the way. <laughs> you know what? You got to look at his body of work. And I, in, in game six and game seven, I was scratching my head over his pitching moves. Exactly. But, Same here. But having said that, this guy got us to the playoffs. This guy got us to the World Series. So whatever his you know, rationale was for it, you, you, you just kind of say, hey, this, this, this guy knows what he's doing, and, and it did work out. Now, if it didn't work out, we'd be sitting here dissecting every, every move. Not me. But, I mean, not, not, well, actually, you know what? 
we were actually we were we were in contact after almost every single game. Yes. And I remember after Game Six, I I, I mentioned to you that um, you know that was the Game Six to me was the especially when they started coming back was the single most exciting game I ever saw in my life. And I wrote you that I hope after tomorrow it will be the second <laughs> most exciting game I've ever seen. And you were right. I was. I couldn't believe it. That game, that game hit everything. That game seven, talk about, <clears throat> and of course, again, in the eighth inning, when Davis comes up and you got Chapman pitching and it's a two-run homer and ties the game, it's like, oh boy. Is it, is it starting to happen? And that guy was like 0 collapse? for 30 or something in the po or 1 for 30 <clears throat> in the postseason. It, it, you know, but you know what? You look at it, then we got that rain delay. And as it turns out, as we found out later, you know, the Cub players held a players meeting during the rain delay. And of all things, Hayward took the lead. Hayward, you know what? He's, he's, I think he'll come back to hitting. He, I agree. he had an off year. I mean, you, the guy's a tremendous defensive out player, uh, outfielder. He's, he's, he's got a cannon for an arm. He's he's a extremely smart baseball player too, and a really good base runner. Yeah, a good base runner. He he's plays, hit for as many as twenty seven homers. I I you know what, he had an off year. Yeah. Uh, I I think he's going to come back and, and his hitting will will come yeah, back. Yeah, he's up only twenty six. I'm not I'm not worried, but obviously he had the respect of the other guys on the team. He called the meeting and got everybody's head on straight and just said, hey, we're the best team. Let's let's go out there and play like it. No, no question, and that was. Uh, Glorious would be an understatement. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and, and Zobrist, you know, there's so many guys on this team. I mean, you know, you lead off with, with obviously, you know, Brian and Rizzo are the recognized leaders of the team, the stars of the team. But up and down that lineup, every one of these guys contributed. You know, Montero came in and, and, and got the, the game he winning RBI. He had a grand RBI. slam home well, run. Well, grand slam home run, uh, you know, in, in, in the first round. And yeah. then uh, uh, he, he and got he the game winning the game RBI win right. in game seven. Yeah. You know, coming off the bench, a guy who really hadn't played a lot during, during the World Series. Yeah, no, he showed his stuff, and, and he was really good defensively also. Yeah, I, you know, I, I mean, I've liked him as a player for many years, even going back to his, his days in Arizona. But you know, what I'm saying is it seems like every guy in that team contributed somehow. It wasn't just the star players. Every guy in that team, when, when the moment came along, guys stepped up and, and got it done. They got a hit or they got a, you know, struck a guy out or whatever it was. You know, Baez was the MVP. It was the co-MVP of the uh, uh, of the uh, championship series. And uh, by the way, I don't want to see Baez is actually of all the all the other people. Well, first of all, if it, no, nobody's trading Schwarber, no, Theo would never let that happen. But I think ba I would put Baez in that same list because his versatility, what he was able to learn and do this year, was unbelievable. And what people need to remember, well, Keith Law, um, you know, who is my favorite sporting news scout type guy when it comes to, well, it, oh, not sporting news, but he's ESPN baseball scout, makes the point that he's got the fastest hands in the major leagues. Now, that applies to hitting. Never thought about it for fielding until he started doing all those tag outs. Oh, the tag that was, outs what were he amazing. Did was, yeah, I've never seen a player do that. To get that. the ball and the glove would be down in a blink of an eye. But here's a guy that we weren't worried about his power. We were worried about this guy being able to hit for average. And the guy hits about 280 for the season, p plays gold glove defense at about three different positions, is arguably better than Addison Russell at shortstop, except I leave Addison Russell at shortstop. He's more stable. Yeah. And, uh, but you know, and this guy's got 40 homer power. And he can fill in, he, he can basically play seven positions well and and look at schwarber here was a guy that you know as soon as he went down in april the story was he'll be back next year there's no way he's coming back any earlier than that and all of a sudden you know i think it was october the 17th he got the clearance from the doctor saying you're physically okay to go back and he goes and hits you know 1200 pitches off a pitching machine and 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 you know gets himself ready and says hey you know, I'm ready if you need me. And boy, he had some key hits. And you know what? I, I, and if you take a look at what he did in the playoffs last year, this guy rises to the occasion like there's no tomorrow. And I don't think it's impossible that he could be the single. And this is even given a guy like Bryant, you know, or a Mike Trout or an Anthony Rizzo. 
I think he's capable of being the single biggest force, you know, at the plate of any player in the major leagues. Yeah, we just we just got to find a place for him in the field. <laughs> that's that's the well, that's the issue. That's tr I mean, you know what? They, they pick up John Jay, the center fielder, who's gonna be good from a leadership standpoint because it's pretty obvious that Fowler is on his, is you know going to sign elsewhere. Yeah, well, you know, give Fowler his props. He came back to the Cubs this year. He he could have signed for more money last year with Baltimore. And, and, you know, looked at it, hey, I've got unfinished business here. I think this team can win. Um, he performed extremely well as a leadoff hitter uh, yeah, throughout the season. Yeah, he was terrific. They're not going to have as good a leadoff hitter and this year no matter what. No, but, uh, but on the other hand, he, he's earned his money. He's earned the opportunity to be a free agent and go to another club that, that can pay him more money or will pay him more money. And actually, unfortunately, at his age, it's going to be an overpay because the last year or two of that contract are not going to be years you're happy with it when that time comes. But you know what? He, he earned and, it. And he, the Cubs, he definitely earned it. And he definitely earns whatever money he can, he can make from this. Because basically, you're also looking at a situation shortly where you're going to have to, resi where you're going to, have to resign. You know, guys like Baez... And Riz, Rizzo's on, 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 under contract for a while, but he's, even though he's a little bit older, he's grossly underpaid. But Baez, Schwarber, all these guys are going to be making, like, serious money. Well, let's hope that cable network, you know, goes through for the Cubs real fast. You know, and I think the Cubs are doing very well here. If you go down there, uh, uh, it's all a construction zone around the ballpark. And the hotel is going up, and this Hall of Fame building, and... They're going to have all sorts of, of structures there that will generate revenue for them. Um, obviously, uh, I'm just waiting for my uh, ticket invoice to come. They're not going, the prices aren't going down, I know that. So. No, well, listen, you can mortgage one of your kids off or sell them <laughs> into white slavery, and uh, you, you should know, be able to afford the ticket the Cubs, the Cubs revenue is, is going to be at a point where they can you know, be one of the top one or two teams in baseball in terms of what they can afford to play, pay Players. And I think they will pay it. And you know what? They'll be able, they'll be making some, and some of this stuff isn't even with the Cubs. Some of this stuff is the Ricketts people themselves. Right. And and as you mentioned, they're, they're in the process of getting their own, kind of like the Yankees have their own network, basically. Yeah. And I think that's about two years away. And I, I'm, I'm not concerned about them generating revenue to be able to pay players to come and play here or stay here in terms of the guys who might you know be coming to an end of a contract. I think that uh, they'll be able to retain all the players they need, and, and also, you know, bring in fresh players. And um, you know, the minor league system is well stocked, so there's some good young players. Basically, by the way, just we've got a, a we've chance. got a guy Ian, Ian uh, Hep who's um, played Double A last year. He was the first round. He was their first round pick in 2015. Who looks like he's who, who the experts are telling us, and all these other guys that Epstein picked along have come through. He's a, he's an above average fielding second baseman. Like we need another second baseman with Baez and Zobrist. Why not? And uh, he can also play the outfield. He, he can play third, but of course Chris Bryant is there. First base, forget it. Rizzo's there. Um, the guy the guy looks like he's 25 homers and 280 and a really good base runner with a high on base percentage with the walks. And you've got uh, Elroy Jimenez, who is only 19 years old, who is a five tool player. Who um, he made, he played in the uh, futures game, and made one of their most remarkable catches you'll ever see in your life. And uh, the guy's six foot four. He weighs two hundred and five pounds already. The guy's got unbelievable power, and and he can hit for average. I mean, you've got so much talent down there. And, and you know, they traded Glybar Torres, who a lot of people say is going to be a superstar, for for Chapman. But you know what? We won a World Series with Chapman. You know, I got no complaints. <laughs> you have to live for today in baseball. You really do. You you can't say, well, you know, we won't trade for Chapman and give up this prospect. Without Chapman, the Cubs wouldn't have been where they were at. There's no way they win without Chapman this year. Chapman was the key element. And hopefully next year, you know, we can, um, you know, th there are other pitchers there. There probably, there's gonna, definitely going to have to be some trades. I mean, there's just not enough room for everybody to play. I mean, logically, you think Jorge Soler is the guy out, but with Epstein, I've learned not to second guess Eps, not to second guess Madden, not to second guess Epstein. No, I, I, they've they've got they're they're going to have to move a couple of guys. They they need to shore up the pitching, so that might be and, how and they do it. And since they've got so many good players, I mean, 
Whoever they trade is going to be an ouch. <laughs> well, you know, look at Carl Edwards, who came in, you know, at the end of the game seven and, and got a couple of outs. Uh, had a little bit of trouble, but he's a young guy. Uh, he consistently throws 95, 96 miles an hour. So maybe he's going to be the closer in the next year or so. And the fact of the matter is, listen, if, if we trade some of these young players, there are players we can get. One of the most intriguing names I've heard lately is Chris Archer. Yeah. It, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a great position to be in also because you know players want to come and play for the Cubs. Exactly. You know, look at Fowler. Fowler turned down more money last year so he could come back. Oh, by the way, interestingly enough, one of the things that I, I was reading about the Cubs is actually the, downs, the only downside of them winning this year is you can't tell anybody anymore, don't you want to be part of history and break this 108-year <laughs> deal? It's gone. <laughs> you know what? I'm sure next year the marketing is going to be, don't you want to be part of history when they win another World Series or another one after that? I mean, you know, the good thing is, and, and, and the, the, the 85 Bears are a cautionary tale, obviously. That's a team that everybody thought was going to win three or four Super Bowls, and they only won one. But you know, but you know what? The fact is the groundwork was already laid because um, idiot McCaskey, Michael McCaskey, the guy who was teaching business at Harvard. What's wrong with you, Harvard? Um, you know, got, got rid of Anisi, you know, right. Jim I, I mean, Fink's left because of him. I, you know, I, I don't want to, that's ancient history, uh, and the point but is... But we still got Epstein for five more years. Yeah, I mean, we, the, our, our management is in place, the scouting team is in place, the guys who identified so many of these good players, and, you know, we've got a good young core of players that, you know, are under contract for at least two or three more years before you... And in some cases... More, More years, yeah. Even, you know, Chris Bryant. We get five four, more, five full years of Chris Bryant, no matter what. The core, the group, same thing with Schwarber. The core group is is there and will be there for the, the reasonable future. So, uh, you know, obviously there can always be injuries, and you know, other teams always get better. So, it, and 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 being the world champion, you're going to have a target on your back now coming into next year. So every team is going to want to beat you because they want to say, hey, we beat the best in baseball. You know what, I, I, I haven't read the story because I have no interest in reading the story, but ESPN um, Insider has a story on what each of all the other teams can do in order to beat the Cubs next year. And I could have written the story myself and, and made it less than one paragraph. The only way the Cubs aren't going to win next year, well, I can't say that because, you know, there's a human factor involved, would be a plane crash, God forbid. <laughs> no, they, you know, That's the, about what it's going to take. The core group of players is is there and, and will be there for the foreseeable future. and, and then Not to a, mention we've got a new core coming up through the minor league system. Well, that's what I mean. If, 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 if somebody does get injured, you know, you, you're going to have a guy in the minors who should be ready to step up and fill in. If not, well, just look at the guys they have now. I mean, you've got you, Zobrist who can play virtually any position. You know, Baez can play all the, you know, outfield, can play second, can play short, can play third if you need him to. Um, and and even, he'll be producing at all-star levels le next year be beyond question. I'm, I'm also assuming Schwarber, yeah, he'll get his time in left field. But, you know, I'm sure he'll spell Rizzo in, in games at first base, too. Probably. And, you know, he might, well, we'll see how his knees are with the catching, but he'll probably do, he could do a little bit of catching, he too. He could. I, you know, that... My concern is because of the, a knee injury and, and when well, you're a catcher. You can be sure the Cubs aren't going to mess that one right. up. They'll make sure that he, he's, he's <clears throat> way over and above and beyond before they do anything like that. But, you know, one of the things you talked about with, with Joe Madden, he, he, he is unorthodox, and he's not afraid to play guys in new positions or different positions. He's not wedded to the idea that this guy's going to play third for 162 games or this guy's going to play short. He can mix, he can match, he gives people days off. Yeah, it almost makes it like you almost hope somebody goes on the disabled list so that the other guy gets a chance to play. He's, you know, he's, he's done a good job of rotating people, and he was criticized for that because people said, no, you know, you know the infielders should all play together so they develop a rhythm together, and the, the, the shortstop and the second baseman know how to turn double plays together. You know, but on the other hand, you have the versatility that you can put a guy in the outfield if you need to make room for somebody else. I didn't see any... You know, major downturn in, in, in productivity if, if Baez spotted somebody at short instead of playing second or at third. You know, 
I, no, I, not at all. As a matter of fact, well, arguably, he's the Cubs' best infielder, and ma many of the uh, experts in baseball think so already. You know, these guys are all really, really good baseball but, players. And by the way, Chris Bryant can really play a serious right or left field. That, you know, yeah, he's, he's, he's a, a good outfielder. So you're not losing anything if in a game, you know, you substitute somebody at third and you put Bryant in the outfield. You're really not losing anything there. And No, it's know. just nice to, have a, it's nice to have an infielder who can hit 39 homers his second year. By, by the way, um, Chris Bryant also has the distinction of being the only person in history to have in four consecutive years to have won college player of the year, minor league player of the year, rookie of the year, and MVP. Yeah, that is amazing, isn't it? But he's that good. And, and, and the other thing is he's that good but he's not the only guy that good on the Cubs. You know, Rizzo's, Rizzo's and, and the anchor And by the way, let's the understand team. he's like 23 years old and still getting better. Rizzo's the anchor of the team, and he's like 27, or will be 27. Yeah, will be 27. You know, I mean, and, and he's he, he arrived during the bad times and lived through all that. And he's definitely the guy that the team has been built around. And, you know, now you've got Bryant, and, and you've got all these other players that we've talked about, and, and guys we haven't talked about who... Again, well, all contributed is, at different is, times. He, he, you know, this guy is. That's guy big deserved hits. to be. It. I mean, the guy's average will come. He's only twenty-one or twenty-two. You know that average is going to come up a little higher than two forty. But they have ninety-five runs batted and hitting two forty. Talk about particularly in the playoffs, timely home runs. I mean, hitting a home run or the grand slam that he grand had, slam you know? that was yeah. I mean, the guy can hit for power, and he's a terrific fielder and good base runner. I, you go around this team, and there's there's really no place you can say there's a weakness. You know, Montero, who was who was the third catcher, and comes in in Game Seven and is asked to come off the bench cold and pinch hit and delivers the game-winning RBI. By the way, that's not to mention the guy who was our number two catcher, who I thought was completely washed up after 2015. And um, Russ, right? Yeah. This guy had an unbelievable, he had the best year of his career offensively. His, his, his last at-bat as a major league player was hitting a home run in the World Series. I mean. Yeah, you don't get any better than that. <laughs> you know, again, if you, you go around this team and there's every single guy in this team contributed at some point during the regular season, during the playoffs, there wasn't anybody in this lineup that you could say, you know, was a wasted opportunity. At, at different times, different people stepped up. But, you know, the result was wonderful. No, hey, listen, you don't do any better than winning the World Series. And, and actually, you don't do any better than winning the World Series when you're down three games to one. Well, three games to zero, but, you know, like, I'll take three games <laughs> to one. And that's not mentioned to the fact that... Um, we actually blew a serious lead in Game 7, and we're behind in one. Ah. <laughs> Looks like you're going to get a little off the hook about talking how miserable the two presidential candidates are, but that's okay. <laughs> you know, Avi, we won the World Series. Everything else comes second. Right. right. <laughs> you know what? All I can tell you is that, um, you know, honestly, if somebody says, starts talking to me about either one of those two people, I say, I'm not interested. Oh, the one thing I will say, though, you know what? This is still America. Whether you like the guy or not, as Hillary Clinton so graciously said in her concession speech, and as Barack Obama, who all of you know I can't stand, graciously said in his press conference, okay, he deserves a chance. And every president, and I haven't liked the last three new ones, you know, Bush, Obama, whatever, I still gave Obama the 100 days to see what he could do, the same thing with Bush. And you know what? You've got to do the same thing for Trump. It's like, this is still America. We're Americans. And you cheer for the government. You cheer for the president. You, if these guys fail, the country fails. It's important for us to stand together. At least give the guy a chance before we hang him. You know what? I'm a believer in the process. I... I participate in the process in my in my profession and um, you know we got to let the process work and play out and you know we may be happy we may not be happy but you know this is the, the people have spoken the people have spoken and um, 
more importantly, the Book of Nally is here. <laughs> and that's thanks to James P. Nally, um, election lawyer extraordinaire. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Sonny Hirsch. And um, thank all of you for joining us, everybody. Bye-bye.